Yo Brain Rebalance Radio Show, where we talk about all things porn addiction and porn addiction recovery related. This is Noah Church. I'm here with Charlie and Dan. Say hello, guys. Yo. What's going on? What's up? <laughs> Charlie oh. is in the U.S. with me, but Dan right now is in Germany. Is that right? Genau. And he's tired as hell. Very <laughs> tired. It's pretty late. It's getting up. Yeah, coordinating the show across time zones is harder than you might think, dear listener. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The things we go through for you guys. <laughs> God. Yeah. You guys are a pain in the ass. <laughs> I was just telling I was just telling these guys before the show that I think the hardest one we had was when you were in London and then it was me and Jack and we were two different time zones in the US and then he came over was from Australia. Oh, man. Yeah, so he woke up at like 8 in the morning on a Sunday with a hangover to do it, which was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm super grateful he did that, but yeah, that was definitely a challenge. Yeah. A truly international show for a truly international problem. Indeed. Yeah. Like Addiction is international. Yeah. So today, we wanted to talk about things we do to fill our lives with positivity and production, rather than just abstaining from porn and masturbation and thinking about how we're abstaining from porn and masturbation all the time. Yeah. So, yeah. We, yeah. the, the oh, big three that I see people talk about a lot are exercise, cold showers, and meditation. Uh, just as little tips and strategies to keep their mind off of abstaining and off of their addiction and keep them in a positive place. Do you guys, I mean, I think we all exercise, right? Yep. Yeah, I do. And I, I meditate a, really a short thing. amount of time daily. I know Dan meditates. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How about you, yeah. Charlie? Do you is that one of one practice that you embrace? Yeah, I, I definitely embrace it, and I highly recommend it. I don't know if I like a lot time for it, I, mm -hmm. but I I always find myself thinking about my thoughts and trying to understand my thoughts. Mm -hmm. uh, it, for at least for little portions of every single day, I notice that I do that, and it's really helpful. So. If if that if we can call that meditation, yeah, then yes, it might be mm. diet meditation. <laughs> well, meditation is such a, a fluid concept, and it can mean something different to a lot of people. The way I learned about it actually was through mindfulness meditation, and that form of meditation, the way I read about it anyway, you can't be doing during your whole waking life. It's just focusing on what you're doing in the present rather than doing an activity, but thinking about the future or worrying about the past. You're just yeah, present with yourself yeah, sure. and focusing on what you're actually doing in the world. Yeah, and this actually is something I, I hear a lot. I get a lot of questions saying, um, uh, "No, you, you meditate. You know, how do you do it and stuff? And how should I?" And it's always it, often with our porn addiction recovery and stuff. We we're looking at goals. We're looking at targets. And I think the good thing about meditation is that you don't really have a target in meditation. And um, you know. Whatever is there is there, you know. In whatever's float whatever thoughts are floating about are floating about, and they can be there. And there's a space for them. Mm -hmm. It's just that you don't identify with those thoughts. It's identifying. It's when you when you sort of say, "I am these thoughts," that that's when you you're in trouble, you know. And the same thing I think is is a very very useful thing for me was to not be identifying with with the porn and and the addiction because the addiction is not you, you know, you yourself. I mean, who? I mean, I mean, we can go into really deep philosophy on this, but less not today, maybe. But, um, but it took me down a very, very sort of spiritual path. But I'm not saying well, will everyone. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, just just kind of observing and and and, and sort of seeing like who is thinking this? Who 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 is like why why am I causing myself this this kind of problem? You know, by judging myself on every relapse and. And kind of thinking, like, thinking, clinging so so rigidly to this kind of I must not relapse. No, yeah. If you relapse, you relapse, dude. You know, it's fine. Things <laughs> happen. It's a, it's an addiction. Mm -hmm. You're gonna relapse. Like, just face it. But it's it's your choice how to react to it. And the thing is, people uh, they they kind of get into this rut of like thinking, oh, but I can't relapse. Oh, but now I'm thinking about I don't know. And then they get in this spiral, you know, vicious circle in their in their heads. It's just like no, leave it all behind and just take each moment as it comes. And if it if it happens, it's happened. It's done, you know. Obviously, obviously, don't do it in the first place. But when it does happen, 
and just leave it and just forget about it like it didn't you know and then just carry on with your life you know because mm -hmm. it's really not worth dwelling on it this is the thing that you know that a lot of people do and it's really hard at first not to dwell on it because you feel like you failed yourself or failed someone but the only thing actually the true failure would be if you just constantly kept thinking about how bad it was to relapse and mm -hmm. blamed yourself yeah and you were, we were just talking before the show that that's one of the things that meditation is really useful for is kind of dealing with failures, quote unquote failures, <clears throat> and it kind of helps you realize that you know this isn't a big deal. I still have self worth. I haven't lost everything. I can get back on the horse. And not as it only good for when you relapse or potentially relapse or whatever happens. It's also good for uh, kind of thinking about your addiction and framing it. So you can really start to ask yourself questions about why you do this. What is an addiction? Why have I done this for so long? Why have I done this for three times a day? Um, and I think those are really helpful for putting you on the track to a successful reboot. Is kind of asking yourself sort of the deeper questions of your habits and your addictions and your compulsions. Mm -hmm. And one thing I think that's interesting is that meditation practices this part of your brain that you might not use very often and that builds up strength like a muscle until it becomes second nature to view your own thoughts and to be aware of your own feelings and where those are coming from which can help greatly yeah. when you're feeling an urge instead of just giving in to that urge and letting it consume you you can take a step back and just watch your own mind as it's working through this desire Absolutely. and if yeah. you watch it long enough that desire will subside and you'll be done. Yeah. You Even if you're, more, if you're more philosophically minded as well, you can look at who is actually thinking these thoughts in the first place. Like who exactly. is actually, who is the mind? Is the mind you? Are you the mind? Or are you the thoughts? Are you the ego? Or is there something else that's watching? Is there, you know, some consciousness that is in fact your true nature? Do you know what I mean? And you can go into this. And actually, for me, uh, this really helped me to just like, to, because I, I don't know, I was always a kind of <clears throat> philosophical, very deep thinker kind of thing, and um, going into this like really just head first sort of thing really really helped me to kind of get a perspective on it. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it's for everyone, but um, just ju just talking from my experience, really. Um, yeah. 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 I I think if I that I think it is definitely one of the most important things to do in your reboot, if not the most important thing. Um, I read somewhere once that like if you can have one sort of life routine that is the healthiest physically, emotionally, and mentally, it is meditating. Mm -hmm. A lot of people would think it's like working out or doing cardio three times a week like that, but this article made the argument that it's meditating. And it's kind of, you know, once you've done it for a while, it's kind of easy to see why and how it is beneficial, particularly in this day and age. Yeah, so, yeah. No, exactly right. And if but, uh, Sorry. If people are having a hard time envisioning what this actually looks like, because a lot of people don't have any experience with meditation, I'll just say what I do. I Usually after my shower, I'll set an alarm for 15 or 20 minutes later and just sit cross-legged on the ground, put my arms on my knees and close my eyes, and I'll just focus on my breath at first and then expand that awareness into my body and just try to remain in that moment, in a moment of quiet with no, no real stimuli, just being there with myself. And that's something that I don't usually do, especially because I was addicted to porn and I was also kind of addicted to TV and video games, not to the same extent. But if I was in a quiet place or I felt uncomfortable or lonely or by myself, I could turn to that. And I wouldn't just sit by myself in silence. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of the classic way to sort of do it. You know, a lot of like the meditation for beginners things I see is sort of like lie down your bed or sit with your, you know, an erect posture. No pun intended. <laughs> um, <laughs> boom! <laughs> uh, but, uh, and, and then, yeah, just kind of a lot, a certain amount of time, 15 to 20 minutes, and just sort of think about your thoughts. I, I One of the best the pieces of advice that I got that helped the most was it isn't wrong if you actually start thinking about things. People kind of are like, clear your mind. If you're not clearing your mind, you're not fucking meditating. But if you... Bullshit. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and it is kind of bullshit. It's the act of just being aware of your thoughts. So, like, you it's, have thoughts. It's exactly the thing. I mean, it's like, it's like whatever's there can be there, and that's the whole point, is that, is that 
you know the mind is like it is like I think it was Alan Watts that said uh, trying to observe your mind like trying to trying to calm your thoughts is like trying to calm a muddy pond by stirring it up with a big ladle. Do you know what I mean? It's like it's not going to work. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's going to yeah. make it muddier. Like if you start thinking, I'm oh, I'm thinking I shouldn't be thinking, then just that's that's a thought. Just leave it. Leave it where it is. Put put it you know put it on yeah. the shelf. Leave it where it is. And then, and then it will eventually calm down, and then the water will be clear. Eventually, you know, it's just like, it, and and then the more you do it, uh, the more with the more frequency, and the more the more you do it, and uh, the easier it will become to kind of get to that stage of clarity. Um, and it, yeah, it just 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 keep 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 at it, and, mm -hmm. and don't worry if your mind is met busy and you are going off into the thoughts because it's the actual act of coming back into the awareness of the thoughts that's the important part. It's when, it's when okay, you, you observe your mind. So, so, so maybe you've got a really, you've had a really busy day or whatever. You've been doing lots of things, and your mind's just thinking about all the things that happened that day. It's going a bit crazy. It's kind of going it's a lot of chatter, you know. And so you sit down. And you think I'm gonna meditate now. You don't really want to. You're not really feeling like it. Um, but you sit down anyway because you think I should. So you do that. And then what can happen is then the thoughts come up again, and you're like, oh, I shouldn't be thinking. Oh, these thoughts. Oh God. And then you're like, okay, I just leave them. <laughs> But then you find yourself anyway going off into them, but that's also fine. It's just the, the it's the, it, it's the, the initial bit is that when you realize something realizes, oh, I'm going off into the thought, and then you just come back to the present moment. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of a third person perspective on the thoughts, almost. Exactly. Kind of. Well, yeah, because because yeah. they, they're only made up by the mind anyway. It's yeah. not like. You just like want to maintain that awareness substance. instead of getting yeah. caught up in it and forgetting that you're supposed to be meditating, forgetting that you're supposed to be observing your thoughts. Exactly. I mean, yeah. I mean, you can really be meditative all the time. I mm -hmm. mean, that's I, I try to be meditative all the time. You know, mindfulness, like everything in my life is now kind of a meditation, really. Like I always try and keep in that state, in that state of kind of awareness as much as possible, and not getting caught up in you know um or or not identifying with with these thoughts mm -hmm. and stuff that come up and it's people ask me when i describe still, still mindfulness like oh, so you never think about the past or the future and no that's not true it's just when you're thinking about the past or the future that's what you're aware that you're doing that's what you want to be doing at that moment instead of letting exactly. those thoughts intrude on other activities yeah exactly yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you know, kind of maybe continuing on from that, I you know, and it's another really classic thing that people tell you to do to fill your time during a reboot. But exercising was for mm -hmm. me the thing that made the most difference. Yeah, if, my, if uh, meditation is number one, exercise is probably number two. Yeah, or the other way around. Yeah, for me, for whatever reason, exercise is my number one. I had a lot of anxiety during my reboot, and long distance running helped me a ton with that. Like. It just helped me in a way mm -hmm. I just can't even explain. And I'm not sure if it's, you know, and not everybody will find the value in it that I did, but getting out and exercising is just a great way to spend your time in general. You're going to feel better about yourself. You're going to be doing something that makes yourself healthier and you'll probably live longer because of it. Yeah, I read a Find study. You like to do. I read a study on depression, and they were comparing the effects of accepted pharmaceuticals for treating depression and exercise. And what they found was that exercise was just as effective or more effective at treating depression as these powerful pharmaceutical drugs. And they actually had thing. a yeah. longer impact than these drugs. If people stopped exercising, it would take them longer to go back to being depressed than if they stopped being on the drugs. And conversely, yeah. it also took exercise a little bit longer to take effect. But if you can do the same thing with running as you can with these powerful pharmaceuticals, Without putting any of those that stuff in your body that has side effects, then wow, that is something really powerful. Yeah, I think the thing is, I think the thing is, we, people have been exercising for centuries, you know, to to and, and meditating for centuries, mm -hmm. especially in the East, to kind of get over depressed feelings or whatever. But then in the West or in in modern society, we kind of we have a bit of arrogance in that we think that our pharmaceuticals and and our way of doing things is better than what's always been done. And I think mm -hmm. there, there needs to be some kind of balance struck in the in the the, the the age old remedies and not just like bullshit to be thrown out with the bath you know, you don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. You know, these things are very valuable and we have other things now that are also valuable 
But we say we need to try to balance and understand that it's not just one or the other, and we can have a combination of these things that are contributing to our to our well being and everything like that. And also, it's partly capitalism as well. They want to sell more drugs, right? Yeah, That's exactly. Basically. They want to they want to sell as much drugs as they can, so they yeah. so they plug it and they plug it and they say, oh no, you know. Yeah, so yeah, it's part yeah. of yeah, our <laughs> bodies are built for a world of action. We didn't grow, Absolutely. or human humans as a species didn't grow up in a world where we could go to the grocery store and do our work sitting at the computer. Yeah, our, these bodies are built for acting, and if they don't fulfill that that destiny, then it's no wonder things go wrong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of why I was reading a book, and that's where I found that same study on uh, exercise in relation to depression and the outcomes with it. But they think humans were, uh, they, we should move 10 to 15 kilometers a day on average. Mm -hmm. And if you kind of track, like, our, this is, this is totally an aside, but if you track, like, our migration out of Africa, you know, like evolution and how we evolved as a species and have developed upright erect postures, they think we migrated to expand over the globe 21 miles uh, every year as a species in each direction mm. which gives you a sense of how long distance we are like we're kind of kind of meant to go meant to go over long terrains yeah. so you're kind of appealing to that when you do exercise in any form cardiovascular and anaerobic mm -hmm. so even lifting I mean well I guess yeah I mean yeah I mean I mean it wouldn't have been Back in the caveman days, it wouldn't have been so much like heavy resistance training as such, but <laughs> yeah. there wouldn't have been many deadlifts probably with a barbell, you know. What are you fucking squatting, bro? <laughs> it's like, how many plates do you lift, bro? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my advice on exercise is just build it into your everyday routine. I exercise in some form every day. It's not always an hour in the gym. When I'm when I'm lazy, I'll just go run a couple of miles. That's like my lazy route. But going to the gym is great too. I think lifting weights and doing resistance training like that it makes me feel different than running. It releases a different set of neurochemicals, I'm sure. Yeah. And it's also good for your body to do different things every day. I've tried a lot of different types of yoga in the last year. I've tried like CrossFit and different other uh, class activities like that. Um, yeah. rock climbing and bouldering just try new things and exercise doesn't have to be okay I'm going to do this many push ups and this many blah 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 it can be I'm going to go with my friends to the bouldering gym and we're just going to have fun for a couple hours and I'm going to walk away sore and tired and with a great workout under my belt yeah yeah that's really good advice just kind of yeah. do something that can get you moving that you feel yeah. inspired to do yeah do something fun do something you like yeah. it's the attitude as well that goes with it you know because if you yeah, you know, yeah. As as Noah said, you know, just have fun at first, and then maybe something can come from that. Maybe you have a routine coming out of that. Mm -hmm. Find something you actually enjoy in the first place. There's no point doing it. No point forcing something. You know, like some people, some people just like force themselves to run. It's like, well, you hate running, so why do you force yourself? You know, there's plenty of other sports you can do. They're like, yeah, no, yeah. just run. You know, but no, like, do whatever you want. Or you can do your running in a way that you would enjoy, like playing ultimate frisbee with your friends or soccer. Exactly. Or whatever. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 I kind of had, you know, the since the topic today is finding, you know, meaningful things to do during rebooting and to replace pornography addictions. There's a question on my journal that was like the exact same thing, except dedicated to people who are long rebooters. Mm -hmm. So it was from a guy named Goldie, and he's he's been rebooting for over a year now, and he still hasn't seen any success. In what is he trying to quality. cure? PIED. PIED, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and he hasn't seen any. He's kind of like distressed. He doesn't, he can't get it up. Still, he doesn't have any morning wood or anything like that. So, mm -hmm. um, and I told him because I remember being in the same situation as him. I remember the first nine months that I was rebooting, I was totally. Uh, obsessed with every detail of my rebooting experience. Mm -hmm. Just like I, I, and I, and I wish I wasn't in retrospect because it didn't really serve to help me. But um, I think so. You know, sometimes just like kind of doing something, not only quitting porn, but just kind of doing something that makes you forget about your addiction is really, really helpful. And meditation and exercising goes along with that. But like, I don't know, like joining, joining clubs and stuff. I know people who do public speaking. That's you, actually, Noah, right? You do, like, a public speaking thing every once in a while? Yeah, I just take the opportunity whenever I get it. I'm not part of Toastmasters or anything, okay. though I might, I might like to be at some point. But, yeah, yeah. A social, I think, 
had has to be number three in our in our list if we're ranking them. Getting out and meeting new people and just finding activities that you love and through that finding people that you love to do them with. Yeah. That, I, that's su super important. Keep going. Yeah. Sorry. I was just gonna say I quit using T V and like movies and video games about a month ago by myself. And that has actually opened up the social aspect even more for me because instead of having that option of turning on Netflix when I'm bored or lonely or restless, now what I usually resort to is just calling somebody and either hanging out or just chatting for a while. And if you, yeah. if you do cut out those super stimuli like porn and other such things, video games, internet gaming, then as you resensitize, things like just chatting to somebody become a lot more engaging and a lot more fun. Before, when I was addicted to porn, I might be having conversation with somebody and just be totally not in that moment thinking like, oh, I just want to get home and relax, eat some food, play some video games, gosh. Watch porn. Yeah, watch <laughs> some porn. But now when I'm yeah. talking with somebody, I'm fully in that conversation and it's, it's awesome. That's one of the biggest things that I've noticed since we've been doing this and we talked about like the common effects of it. Mm -hmm. All of us have said that being more involved and attentive in conversations is like... Yeah one of the most common things that has happened since uh, quitting porn. For me, meeting eye contact, too, that kind of goes with it, but, like, yeah. sustaining yeah, eye contact. I, like, make a game of that. I just will not look away first <laughs> for anybody. <laughs> 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 if you did that with me, I'd probably be my fans. <laughs> like, sir, did you just be yourself? <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I love doing that. Just, I mean, not, yeah. not trying to intimidate anybody. Sometimes I'll just look at them and smile and wave, but I won't look away first. Yeah, I do that. And it's really interesting <laughs> seeing, I read that, uh, and it, I think I have experienced this as well, when someone makes eye contact with you and then looks down, they're kind of intimidated by you, or if it's as a member of the opposite sex, perhaps attracted to you. But if they look to the side, that's just kind of ignoring you, not really caring about you. I didn't know that. Yeah. I'm going to be doing that now. I'm going to be thinking, oh, she's not interested in me. Oh, but. <laughs> <laughs> As, and if she looks down and then looks back at you, then that's a green light right there. <laughs> All these subtle little body language cues. Mm -hmm. Never it's fascinating, huh? Yeah. Interesting. Okay, so what do we have on the list so far? We have meditating, number one. Mm -hmm. Exercise. Exercising in whatever form. And then getting out and socializing. Do you guys have any, Daniel, do you have any ideas for getting out and socializing besides just literally getting out and socializing? Like any like activities or events you recommend? Um, martial arts are good. It's also because exercise and it's also like, um, it can be even meditative as well. It can be all three in one, mm -hmm. actually. Like if you do like something like Kung Fu or something like that, or like Aikido, a more spiritual kind of martial arts or some of them, some branches are, and you can have an, almost like a meditative kind of thing and an exercise and socializing. So you have all yeah. three. Which I, I think they're great. I mean, I, I haven't been doing martial arts since I was about 16, but I want to take them up again because I just I loved it. Uh, mm -hmm. I loved it, and it's something that I probably would have, in high insight, you know, wonderful thing, but I probably would have, probably would have done more of. Yeah, my in more general, just take a class or join yeah, a group a that's class. trying to learn something. Yeah, martial arts, just anything you're interested in, just go. Mm -hmm. and other people are doing the same thing, just go along. And just, but it's it's hard at first because you sort of feel uh, self-conscious or whatever. But everyone's in the same boat. Yeah. But everyone's going because they they want to find people who are interested in the same, have the same interests, and we'll get on with them as well. Find yeah, if you them. if you quit porn and don't feel those superpowers of just totally absence of social anxiety and you're all of a sudden the king of the room don't worry about it man it's it's a skill like anything else that you build over time just go out there and do your best and keep doing that and if you do sooner or later you'll be past any social anxiety you have yeah yeah I uh, if anybody's in college or is uh, like applying to universities right now I totally recommend studying abroad that's mm -hmm. a really good thing to do you can do it even when you're a rebooting porn addict like just go and, and do it. It's such a good way to get out of your comfort zone, try new things, and honestly, you will forget that you had uh, any sort of problem with porn addiction the first two weeks you're there. There's like so much else to think about, you know? Yeah. 
Yeah, when you're living um, life, you're not really thinking about, or at least me, at least I'm not thinking about porn. Even when I was using, if I was out on a trip or engaged in like a, a live-in class, which I did, I wasn't thinking about porn. I didn't miss porn. I was just living. It was when I was yeah, back I was back at way. home and I was responsible more for my own time and I was a little bit more listless and without direction. That's when I would turn to porn. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. This is also, yeah, absolutely. This is definitely something that is even even now something that's more on my mind when when I'm at home alone. And it's not like it's not like doesn't it's like I can just ignore it now, kind of, but mm -hmm. you know. Still, something that that, that that crops up occasionally, time to time. Yeah, it's just, just when I'm on my own. It's like never when I'm with people or or out and about or doing something or on yeah, like living somewhere else or you know yeah, as you say. So so yeah. Well, there's go a couple. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to go ahead, keep on. Go on a retreat is also a really good good thing to do. Which you just did. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, I went and lived at an ashram actually. <laughs> I was I was living in an ashram. It's like a kind of um, it's the name of like a Hindu kind of temple where where the guru lives essentially. And there's this guru called Muji, who I've been following quite mm -hmm. quite a lot. It's really 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 profound insights I think into kind of some of the stuff about the self. Very very simple teaching. It's nothing nothing culty or anything like that. It's very actually very very practical and not even religious, not even dogmatic. Just very kind of like who are you? Look into the nature of the self. Are you just the thoughts, the mind? Basically, what I've been saying: Are you just the thoughts, the mind, and the ego, or are or are you something else? Is there something watching that's more permanent? You know, because as as we say, all these things in life they're just fleeting, they're coming and going. Uh, but there's something also that is underneath this that seems to be just 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 this, just just here. And um, it's basically the whole thing was about getting getting in touch with that and and remaining with that, single pointedly focused on that. That on yourself, basically, on your true self. Mm -hmm. So that's also just, that just really just opened up. I don't know a lot of kind of opened up a lot of doors for yeah. me because also you realise the kind of the places where your ego tricks you out and the places where your mind tricks you as well. You kind of find your mind playing games with you, but it's the same guy. It's always the same guy. It's the same guy that says, "Hey, look at porn now." And the same guy who goes afterwards, oh, you shouldn't have done that. It's the same guy all the time. It's the same mind. It's not a different mind. It's the same mind. And that mind is a creation as well. Because there's something underneath that that's just watching. It just, it's subtle and it's just there. But it's, just, it's always, you can't trust it. You can't trust all these thoughts all the time. And um, people, you know, we, we identify too strongly with them. I mean, they can be there, but you, it's like identification, as I say. You know, there's no need to cling to or attach yourself to them. They're just there. They're just doing what they're doing. It's cool. They can be there, <laughs> but you know, it's not yeah. me. So you just say it's not me. I don't have to listen to that. You know. Excellent. Get yeah, that sounds today. like an amazing experience. It was very beautiful. Yeah, definitely very profound and um, it's very basic living as well. Just like living in a hut with no no electricity or water. You know, toilets like quite far away. Had to walk to them and no flush toilets or anything. One drinking water tap in the whole place. Um, just working on the land in the day, in the day, just six hours a day. It was it was in Portugal, so it was quite sunny in the day. Um, yeah, just working on the land, planting trees, digging holes, digging up old trees that weren't happy, and put planting them in other places. Yeah, it was just really simple, mm -hmm. really really simple. And just kind of meditating in the evening or just whenever. Two hour lunch break. Really really relaxed, but very much. But is it the people there as well, it's interesting, because people there, it almost looks like on the outside they're not really doing anything, but they're engaged in the contemplation, like seriously engaged. Everyone is serious about it, you know? And it's a very good atmosphere to be around. Absolutely. It's, yeah, when yeah, I'm working with my hands and doing labor, that's when yeah. I come up with some of my best ideas. Like my mind is really able to just flow free and arrive at new places. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, getting outside and walking around outside does that for me too. Just kind of refresh mm -hmm. the mind. You're not cooped up all the time. And don't think that you have to go to an ashram in Portugal either to recover. <laughs> Just <laughs> no, do something. Yeah. Do something. Sometimes yeah. I get caught in this realm of inaction. Like there's so many options. What do I do? I'll just do nothing. But no, do something. Yeah. Do, do I'll do nothing. <laughs>
Dude, and that brings yes. me to another point. If you spend, let's say, 75 days, you're rebooting, and during this time you're taking new classes, you're meeting new people, you're accomplishing all these things, you're exercising, you got some gains in the gym, and then you relapse, and you binge for like a week. Well, if you'd just been sitting that time waiting for your dick to get better and your brain to get better, you would now have nothing. But yeah. since you were doing all those things, even though you binged and you might have set yourself back, you still, you've learned some German, you are more fit than you were, you have some new friends. Exactly. Yeah. It's, so, never, it's, it's never lost, it's never all lost. Mm -hmm. we, and we've said this on so many shows already, haven't we, Charlie? I mean, and like, it's, not, it's never all lost. Just because you had one, even, even if you binged for a week or, you know, yeah. it's not all lost. It's not like, oh, I've got to start again from scratch. No, 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 no. No, you, you've already had so much time off doing yeah. what you used to do every day for years and years and years. So Your experiences you know are saying? only losses yeah. if you refuse to learn from them, is what I think. Exactly. Noah, your experience with, I mean, it's a little different than an unintentional relapse, but when you went back to porn for that, you know, a brief two-week period, you said it made you a lot a lot stronger, right? Yeah, and I didn't like fully embrace porn for two weeks. I, I, yeah, we I talked agree. about this in the last episode, so I don't want to talk about it too much more. But yeah, yeah, that two weeks of, like, I tried it again one night, and that's all I intended to do was to try it again for one night. But once I opened that door, of course, it was hard to close it again. But the process yeah. of going through that and facing what would happen to me if I relapsed was really educational because I had always wondered, you know, what, what happens if I relapse? Do I give in and go back to who I was? And that fear, I think, kind of was always weighing on my mind. And now that I know what happens if I relapse, I grab myself by the balls and dust myself off and keep going and learn from my experiences and make my life even better. So I'm not afraid of yeah. relapse anymore, and not, yeah, and that was that was yeah. Keep going. Sorry. I don't think that relapse will happen again, but if it does, then I'll handle it no problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, precisely. Yeah, I mean, you you learn a lot from each relapse, mm -hmm. and you get better at this whole process when you do it. At least that's what I I, I believe that. So, I also think it like. Um, it's good not to even think about it as a process or even as a as a thing in itself. Like sometimes, sometimes we get way too caught up in the in the kind of terminology and the kind of conceptualization of recovery. And sometimes it's just good to just forget about it all and just live your life. Literally, just forget about it all and don't yes. even, don't even try and not relapse. Don't even try and not think about porn. Don't even try and just 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 go out and live the life you you want. And if it happens, and you relapse, it happens, and just go out and do it again. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And if it happens again, just brush yourself off, as Noah said, brush yourself off, grab yourself by the balls, and go out and do it again. Just start again, you know, live your life. It's about yeah. life. It's not about recovery from, from, a, from porn or you're getting a dick better. I mean, it, there, there is a side effects, positive side effects of a recovery, but it's about getting your life back. It's not yeah. about just getting a dick better or it's nothing about that actually it's, it's, it's so it's so that is actually quite that's actually trivial in comparison to the amount of benefits there are in this whole process it's trivial mm -hmm. yeah I think about it like I think I said this before on the show you quit PMO and your prison cell is unlocked but if you just sit there waiting for freedom to come to you it's not going to come you have to go out go out into the world and take it absolutely yeah that, that's a fantastic analogy yeah and I also like to tell people, grab yourself by the balls, not by the dick. <laughs> <laughs> so, totally. one more thing Some that... Some might is, have some weird habits, no, they might understand you there. <laughs> the people I tell it to understand it. <laughs> but one more thing that's really common is cold showers. So, I'll, oh, yeah. I'll talk about my history with cold showers. I actually came to cold showers before I ever heard of anyone ever doing this. That was about five, six years ago, maybe. My friend and I were hitchhiking through my home state. We were hiking part of the Pacific Crest Trail, which those of you who don't know, it's this thousand, thousands mile long trail on the West Coast. I wasn't doing thousands of miles, but we did a few miles. And we were setting up camp for the night, and I was just exploring around, and I found this waterfall in this pool, and I decided I wanted to clean myself. So I jumped in the waterfall, 
and I was washing myself off and it was super frigid, super cold, and I got out and I just felt so alive and so filled with vigor and so clean, like cleaner than I'd ever felt before. And from that moment on, when I got home, I just started taking cold showers. And it wasn't as good as showering in a waterfall, but still, cold showers are awesome. And I, I was glad to find that other people do that once I found NoFap, because it's always made me feel really good. And it's so many benefits to it. You can look it up yourself, dear listeners. But one of the greatest things, aside from just making me feel great, is that it builds discipline. Because sometimes, going into a cold shower, I don't want to take a cold shower. I'm already cold, but doing something I don't want to do every single day, but that I know is good for me, that, like I've been saying, is a habit. It's a muscle that come, becomes stronger and stronger, and that bleeds yeah. over into other aspects of my life, like resisting porn urges. Well, I'm already used to doing things I don't want to do that I know are good for me, and that make me feel better in the long run, so I'm just going to not use porn. Yeah, nice. How, how, yeah. How, long take, how long take cold showers for normally? Uh, usually three to five minutes. Bloody hell! <laughs> <laughs> I think I've survived about what I think I've done. I've, I've only had like one cold shower and I hated it, and then <laughs> <laughs> never tried it again. <laughs> but I know, and I do a lot of meditation, so I guess mm-hmm. it balances out or something. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't think you thing. have to do cold showers to be successful in a reboot, of course. But for me, yeah. it really it's always helped. And when I, I paired mean, you it don't with, nec- when I paired it with NoFap, it it was synchronized very well. Yeah, you don't necessarily need to do any of these to have like yeah. have a successful reboot. You know, like if you if you decide not to ex if you're not a big exercise person, you don't do it regularly. Mm-hmm. I truly do believe you can still reboot. But these are things that'll help you. They'll not only help you avoid relapses, but they can help you be a more confident person. There's a lot of gain from them. I feel like so. Yeah. yeah. How about you, Charlie? Do you do cold showers? I have done them before. I've had periods of doing them and periods of not doing them. I guess I was never really too smitten with it. Mm-hmm. I, I did it for like two or three weeks, and I was like, yeah, it feels pretty good. Stuff to do. I can totally see the discipline thing, because it takes, <laughs> takes a lot of discipline and hard work to get in a cold shower every morning. Mm-hmm. But I used to, funny enough, I used to only do cold cold showers when I like went out to bars with friends and got like too drunk and came back and just felt like all hot and flush. And yeah. Like, Cold shower, and I like stumbled <laughs> into the shower. <laughs> so I was like, oh, that kind of felt pretty good. Yeah. So, I, I know what you mean thing. about the, the discipline thing again is for a long time, I would dither about before doing the cold shower. Oh, do I really want to do this? Blah, blah, blah. Trying to talk myself out of it. But since I've been doing it long enough, I just walk in, and the first thing I do is turn it on, shower, opens up right on my head. I don't like do my feet first or anything like I used to do. And just seeing a challenge that I know I want to do and taking action immediately, that's a habit I'd love to build, so that helps me with that. Yeah. It's like yeah. approaching women, well, too. If you wait just a few seconds, you'll psych yourself out. But if you see a woman and you build that habit of, oh, just approach, have a conversation, and that's just what you do, then it gets a lot easier to yeah. meet new women and form new relationships. Transferable skill. Yeah. It's, it's just no big deal, is it? It's like none, none of it's a big deal actually. It's just what you make mm-hmm. of it. Again, identification with the thought. This yeah. is, this yeah. is me who's thinking this. This is so important to me. To who? You know, just go and do it. You know, just just do it. <laughs> <laughs> Nike, just, just do it. <laughs> just do it. We don't we don't endorse Nike. <laughs> we, we we don't. Uh, and more importantly, they don't endorse us. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Nike doesn't endorse us. <laughs> no, it doesn't. But we should ask them. Yeah. <laughs> Next time you Maybe see us, we'll all be wearing Nike gear. Yeah. <laughs> you guys want to move to questions? Uh, sh- I have, just have one more topic I'd like to touch on. Okay. Because cool. I thought yeah, it yeah. was actually the most important, and that's finding purpose in your life. Ooh. Yeah. Because. What do you have to say? About it? Well. I mean, finding what you're meant to do and what really resonates with you, I think it's one of the most important things we can do. And it took me a long time to figure out what my purpose was, but once I had it, it became a lot easier to focus on that and be happy in my life rather than turning to escape routes like porn. One strategy I learned a long time ago to do that was to sit down with a piece of paper and a pen. The question is, what is, your, what is the purpose of your life? And you write an answer to it. And then you write another answer to it. And then you write another answer to it. 
And you do that until you start to cry. And then you found your life's purpose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. No, that's that's really good advice. Sounds transcendent. <laughs> yeah. I think all of us have um there's a certain thing. Yeah, just just just, just like I like just dig deep, right? Just, mm-hmm. just dig deep, as deep as you can, as deep as you, you're able to, to dig, because, yeah, because porn addiction is also quite, it seems like a deep-seated thing, but if you dig even deeper than that, then you can dig it out, Yeah. Right? <laughs> you have to dig as deep as you, as deep as it's rooted in you, you can, you dig deeper than that, and then when you get to that point, I kept digging, because I just <laughs> loved it, I just loved it, I, I just loved the digging process, so I kept digging, and now I'm here, in this kind of, you know, and I do like all this stuff and go to ashrams and shit. You don't have to do that, but I did because I, I think that's my purpose in life. Actually, I think I found my purpose in life through the digging itself. Mm-hmm. But some people, some people want to stop digging and they want to get on with other things, which is also fine. But yeah, I completely agree. Find your purpose and try out things, and yeah, and go for it. Because a lot of us with power, with this addiction, have kind of you know never really thought about these questions. Like you just always kind of put them off when you when you're addicted to something. Like at least I did. It's a, a whole. I didn't just like procrastinate my day to day work. I just procrastinated and like my feelings and my thoughts and yeah. the way I assess things. Yeah. So I think it's really good advice. A lot of things you can think about. I always like to think about like you know what makes me happy. What are things that make me happy? And I've never like written it down. Mm-hmm. But like, what does it mean to be a happy person? It's just something I've deliberated about over the last five or six months, and you know I have like some answers and, so, and stuff like that. But it's an important thing for me to ask. Like, I really want to be happy the rest of my life. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, I love how you yeah. put that. You procrastinated on your feelings. Oh uh, right. yeah. I'm gonna steal that one. Steal all you. <laughs> all, all you. I'm not gonna have any bitterness or resentment. <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> yeah. You're good. And, Another thing, like there's this life that people want you to live, that society wants you to live, that your parents want you to live, that your wife wants you to live, or your girlfriend. Don't do it. Don't do it unless it resonates with you. No one is responsible for your life. No one has to deal with the consequences of your life but you. So do what really resonates with you. Wise words. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, you, said you, Wise were, words. you said we had some questions. Yeah, I got one right here I pulled up. Mm. Hold on. Uh, I usually ask for a question about performance, whether we have... Okay, so he says, I have a discussion idea. This is OSS from Re- Reboot Nation, by the way. OSS. Usually us rebooters are concerned about performance and whether we will have porn do CD once we get in bed, but I rarely see anyone discussing how to realistically converse with women. As mm. I'm sure porn convinced many of us that if you help a woman fix her flat tire... You could expect her to be taking your pants off five minutes <laughs> later. <laughs> it's really good. So many of us have at least some experience with women. It's not enough over. It's not enough to overpower the unrealistic torrent of porn fantasy from years of PMO. Discussing how to show you're interested without being overbearing and what type of feedback to realistically expect, etc., would be helpful. Would be a helpful topic. Not like pickup artist stuff, but realistic conversing advice. Wow. Thanks, yo. It's a really good question. That's a huge question. We could do like yeah, eight shows we, about that. We could. We could do some stuff. We could talk about it fast, though. Yeah, yeah. So, well, the first thing he asked was how to talk to romantic relationships about PIED, right? Um, no, I no? think. Uh, usually, the person concerned about performance or their. No, his, his only question was how to realistically converse with women. Oh, just period. Yep, period. Oh, yeah. okay. I'm looking at it right now. Uh, well, he one... says usually us rebooters are concerned about porn and CD when we get in bed, but mm-hmm. I rarely see anyone t- discussing. Okay, yeah, the well, conversation. my biggest piece of advice there is just be genuine. Um, don't try to manipulate the situation. Just be there in the moment. And people really appreciate it when they're talking with someone who's generally curious about their lives. I think about yes. it. You meet someone who's just fascinated by what you do and is asking you questions and just really seems interested in who you are. You walk away being like, man, that person was awesome. They really liked me. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. just be genuinely interested in people. 
That's exactly the fucking thing I was gonna say. Damn it. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that if you are if you are enge- if you are talking with them to hear them, mm-hmm. to listen to them, that's the best advice I can say. Because then all of a sudden it doesn't really you you forget that this is a beautiful woman. You just want to hear what she has to say. Yeah. You know. And with beautiful think- women, they actually don't get that very often, because they're so that. used to men wanting them for their bodies and thinking not about who they are, but okay, how can I move this forward into a physical relationship? That if you are actually genuinely interested in who they are, that might set you apart. Yeah. I think I completely agree. I think the best way as well to actually kind of engage the woman and get to know her is just to forget about the whole thing. Forget, like literally, forget mm-hmm. about trying to pick her up, forget about yeah. all that. Don't be goal oriented about it. Just be natural. Don't be goal oriented because it, because if you do, then you're never going to develop your natural. You're never going to be able to get back to your natural way of talking to women. We're all ingrained, I think, somewhere. Some of us are worse at it than others, or whatever. But it's buried deeper. But we're all we're all supposed to be able to speak to women, right? That's kind of our natural. <laughs> what we're supposed to be able to do, I, I guess. Like some of us would disagree with that, but um, the, some, somewhere deep down, that we know. How to how to engage women? I just think a lot of conditioning and a lot of years of porn abuse have kind of uh, dulled our minds to the extent where we have actually completely forgotten how to actually engage women. It's just, it, and and the truth is, it's just like any uh, any other interaction with any other human being apart from it has a sexual undertone. And sexual undertone is very subtle. It's not something that should be obvious, or you should make try to make obvious. It will happen when it happens naturally, and it will happen at a certain point in your reboot where you're ready for it as well. So. Practice, chat to girls, get mm-hmm. to know them, as as Noah says, get to, and as Charlie said, get to know them, talk to them as people, and forget all of the stuff that you 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 think that you know about you know porn how just 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 put that in mind, have a chat, and then after a while from lots of chats you might start to get some actual flirting techniques or whatever mm-hmm. developing, I think yeah yeah oh, definitely yeah. Most important thing like is to put yourself game. out there and get experience, exactly. right? Yeah. Right. And yeah. if people out there are looking for good authors um, who write about romantic relationships and relating to women and getting into that, and I don't want you to find someone like Mystery or some crappy PUA pickup artist and learn God, from I them. So I'll recommend two authors who I think actually write really good advice, and that's Mark Manson. And Corey Wayne, look up those guys if you're really wanting to become better with women. Nice, interesting. I'll have to do that. Mm-hmm. So that's all we got for questions. There's only one. I've question. actually got I got a question sent to me the other day. Um, oh, you did by a guy called uh, Zandox Reboot Nation. Mm-hmm. He says, I personally am interested in talking to you because in the description on YBOP, you, it mentioned you did some sort of meditation. I'm interested in, as to how that worked for you. I think we pretty much covered that. He says, hey, Dan, I'm 19, extremely worried about my state, and could use some advice. I probably attempted to quit at least over 50 times in the last two years. I don't know what's happening. I'm actually going to a meditation retreat this break, and hopefully that will work. You see, my longest streak was probably a month with no PMO, and I've tried using web security to block myself from porn, cold showers, talking to girls. I had a girlfriend for a while, but then she ended up not being right for me. I have read and listened to everything on YBOP except for the news stories that seem to come out daily. Right now, I'm in university. I got some. I just got some scholarships for community work. I'm going for the prestigious fraternity. And I even made it on a global on global TV, the Toronto Sun, and other things for my community efforts. Although for some reason I just keep falling back into a pattern. I'll feel great for a while, then force myself to do it again. I've sat in bed without eating, showering, and whatnot to basically masturbate all day. I try and follow a schedule, and it works. But the minute something gets in the, gets in its way and messes my my routine, I fall right back into it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. These are, these are the toughest questions for me to answer because I don't, when I think about how I was able to successfully get rid of porn, it's tough for me to like describe it other than the things 
you know, that I was doing because sometimes people do all those things and it's just not enough. And so for me, for me, what, what really got me started and what allowed me to quit porn forever was this visualization of my life. Right. And mm. what, and like all my goals. So like I knew I wanted to have a girlfriend and I knew someday I wanted to fall in love and to get engaged and to get married and have kids and be happy. And I, I knew that wasn't compatible with my porn addiction at all. And those things like really jar me up for some reason. Those things that I really want and expected out of life that I knew I can't have if I don't get it. I even feel emotional right now talking about it. Mm-hmm. But that that was like, the, and that just, I was like, I have to do it. There's no other question about it. I can't, I can't have any of these things if, if I don't learn how to beat this addiction. And so that's all I can say is just kind of think about why you want to do it. Yeah, I think my answer is. I think my answer is pretty similar. Say the one if there's one reason I was able to successfully quit, it was because I wanted it more than anything else. And porn, using porn had ruined my life in some ways. It definitely ruined my romantic life and my sexual life. And once I learned that, I just wanted it. I wanted to be a porn-free man more than anything else. And so I found a way at every turn to make that happen. So really think about your reasons for this and why you want it. That's that's my best advice on that. I'd say a similar thing. Um, apart from I think, think I, I'd add that maybe think about the way you're doing things. I mean, I mean you're doing, you're going through, mm-hmm. you're doing these things. Uh, but does it feel like you're occasionally going through the motions, or are you doing it with full power? You know, when you're having a cold shower and you're talking to girls and stuff and you had a girlfriend, etc., are you doing it with full power with the with you know, or are you doing it with just kind of half heartedly because you feel like you should, you know? So again, you know, uh, so kind of building on Noah's point, you know, you, you really want this, you want you want to be free from poor addiction, then um then go for it, you know. Mm-hmm. Don't beat around the bush, as it were. <laughs> yeah, this isn't it's not a recipe for a porn free life like you don't add a dash of cold showers and uh, a dollop of <laughs> exercise and come out with a porn yeah. three porn free life it's it's more complicated than that there has to be this ultimate driving force behind your mission to be a porn free man mm-hmm, absolutely and yeah if it sounds like what you're doing right now is not working so change something um mm-hmm. Maybe it's it's a hard rule that your computer just does not go in your room at all. Yeah. And if, if that's your habit is lying on your bed masturbating to whatever, then your phone, like no electronics in your room. It's just a hard rule. They don't go in your room. Mm-hmm. So I did. Worked for me. Mm-hmm. Gabe did the same thing. Well, I don't know if he did electronics, but I know his computer, he moved it out of his room intentionally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me too. For the first couple of months until I trusted myself. I still don't have my computer in my room. Mm-hmm. Because I'm addicted to the internet as well, so it doesn't work for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I end up spending ages on Facebook before bed, and it just it stops you from sleeping properly, I think. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Because the glare from the light is just not good for you before bed. Yeah, I'm like a fucking alien if I do that. <laughs> yeah. I have a potty mouth today, I gotta watch it. Uh, <laughs> those were some really good questions, though. I'm glad we yeah. got those. Yeah, those were. We're sitting at about 53 and a half minutes right now, so I think yeah. it's a good time to call it a wrap if you want to do that. That was a really Absolutely. good show. Absolutely. Yeah, for everyone who go. made it this far, thanks so much for listening. We love you. And we're also looking for callers who want to be a part of the show, have a question or a topic they'd like to talk about for a few minutes. So if you're interested in that, get in touch with us. Um, do you have an email address that they should use, Charlie? Um, they can just message me on... Mm-hmm. YBR or Reboot Nation. I assume that's where many mm-hmm. of the people are finding and, me. And you are Fugu. Fugu. Yep. F U G U. And you can message me as well. I'm Spangler. S P A N G L E R. And I'm Jeff. On, <laughs> on YBR. And Dan <laughs> slash Jeff on Reboot Nation. Mm. Great. Yeah. Yeah, we'd love to so have could- more people be a part of this. You just have to have Skype. A webcam, preferably a reliable internet connection, and something to talk about. A question exactly. for us, yeah. perhaps. We'll see you next time. We should have a new show in a week to uh, two weeks. So, hope you guys are liking the shows, and we're gonna just keep them cranking. So. Mm-hmm.
Cool stuff. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.